Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh review. Today, I'm taking a look at the Kyoto Amazing Yamaguchi Bleeding Edge Armor Iron Man. And I know what you're thinking. I've posted on several, several social medias and even on here that I am flooded in, and I actually am. There is so much damn water around me right now. But yesterday, we made the long hike north through some fields. I had to a road. We were able to drive, even though that was kind of sketchy in places. And I made it into town for the essentials, you know, bread, milk, water, action figures. And then today it went back to raining, so the field is becoming a muddy, marshy swamp again. So I'm sitting here <laughs> doing nothing, trapped again. I might as well play with some toys, right? Looking at the package, it's your standard amazing Yamaguchi packaging. Just craziness all over the place. This seems not as busy not as crowded as the usual boxes but it still has graphics all over it then you can see the figure and some of the accessories in the window they don't make it really appealing <laughs> you're covered in the plastic to try to protect the finish i do have some pieces floating around in the package that's it refund i want a refund for this on the side pretty promotional shots in front of several pictures from the comics on the back more pretty promotional shots and the ever amazing oh man i love the quotes on the back of these miss potts i'm sure this thought has already occurred to you but this is a terrible product launch did you miss me we're cool roadie we're super cool ohio gozamasu folks we're here to help i probably butchered that but i, I yeah i love these things then down here a bunch of unreadables all the accessories that come with this thing oh <laughs> we're gonna be busy for a while on the other side that fight night poster style with the big pixels you can see the dots and everything i i really like this i, I the packaging at first i thought man they're going too far but the more of these figures i collect the more i like the packaging on the top another piece of art from the comics on the bottom another picture a bunch of unreadables you're winning lottery numbers i'm gonna get this open and uh see just how much stuff is in here it's so like usual the inside flaps iron man logo iron man picture boom and then behind the usual artwork oh wait a second I really like this. Usually there's more art from the comics, but this is more of a background that you can use behind the figure on the shelf, maybe. Then the blister, it's double layered. Is that the lid for this one? There we go. And there's more missile stuff, more stuff that's fallen out of the trays, and the stand is taped to the back. And there's the instructions hidden right there. The instructions are essentially just plug anywhere you find a hole. Also in the package with the stand, they gave us a bunch of extra little joints right here. I, I'm, I'm guessing wrist and maybe attachments. So extras are always good in case you break something or something's loose. That's awesome. And then we go all out of the package. And before we go too far, let's just take a moment and bask in the glory of this. I've always made a point of stating that these are meant for action poses. They don't look good in neutral position, but Iron Man here, oh, he just breaks that mold spectacularly. Now, I haven't read Iron Man comics in a long, long time. I know this is bleeding edge armor. I know he's had a lot of armors in the comics. I don't know all the differences, but from what I can tell, just quick Google searching, oh man, this kind of nails it. Of course, it's stylized. It's Kyoto. It's the amazing Yamaguchi line. But even then, I, this isn't too far off. It is undeniably unmistakably Iron Man. All the sculpt is nice and sharp and it has all these just details in it. It's not a boring figure. You're not going to look at it and go, oh, well, there's some flat spots. There is some flat spots. Oh, there's some seam lines. There is some seam lines, but they're just so well integrated into the action figure itself. And then on top of that, this candy red, it's got some metallic flake to it. And I kind of worry about that because as much movement as this figure gets, there's going to be some scrapage. But right now, looking at it, mm, 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 that is delicious. The gold isn't quite shine gold. You know, it's not reflecting back at you. But I like that as a nice offset from the candy red. But to go even further into dull territory, there are these blue dots. And, you know, it, part of me wishes that they were shiny. But at the same time, it's kind of cool to see just plain flat blue. Boom, boom, boom. Just here and there, just to break up the sheen of the armor. So yeah, I was going to complain, and then I thought, nope, I like it this way, actually. There's a couple spots. You can see the red kind of bleeds into the blue right there. But that's digging really, really deep. And then up at the head, <laughs> everything I said about the body, it pertains to the head too. It may be a little bit small. Again, it's stylized. That's just the way this line is. Even the bottom of the feet have some detail on them. Now, before getting into articulation, which may take 30 minutes on this damn thing, I, some gripes I have, this neck piece, 
there is a collar that if you pull back, you can see that this kind of floats around it. And that collar piece goes all the way back around here and even forms kind of the spine. Separate piece completely. Out of the package, it was sitting like this and I was moving the neck around and you can kind of see the neck popping through that gap right there. I think the way it's actually supposed to be is tucked down behind the torso armor. So if you can get it to there and then kind of push down, it looks better. But once you start posing, it's, it's coming out. Now that I've had it tucked back there a little bit though, it wants to go down on its own. Ah, well, either way, I'll just keep pushing it. That's what I'm used to with Kyoto. Another thing, not so much a gripe, but a noticeable difference from previous Amazing Yamaguchi figures is the lack of clicks in the Revel Tech joints here. They just move nice and smooth all the way around. And we've seen them moving closer to this with each release. At the first of the line, you would move the torso around and it was one Revel Tech joint in there. So it'd be kind of hard to maneuver, it'd gap up. This is actually two ball joints now. The knees aren't even a Revel Tech joint here. It's a smooth single joint that actually gets a lot of range of movement. But you will notice on mine, no gap on the left side, gap on the right side. I'm a little bit worried about that. But I've been moving him, and I haven't had a problem, so who knows. Same thing here at the shoulders. Usually we see a double Rebel Tech joint ball right here, but this is actually a ball joint in the arm going to a Rebel Tech joint in the torso. So you could say that they're moving more towards uh, traditional action figure techniques, maybe. It's not so breaky-breaky everywhere, gappy in spots. They're tightening everything down a little bit. Oh, just a little bit of movement, and the neck is all wonky again. For articulation, there is a ball joint at some kind. Does this come off? I don't want to pull. It doesn't seem to want to come off. But unlike other amazing Yamaguchi figures, there's this other cap under the head. You can see it disappear right go up there. So that gets you more movement up. And for an Iron Man figure, for a flying character, this is much, much needed. And then, because the neck being like it is, it looks like there's another Rebel Tech joint in there on some kind of arm, maybe something. But with all that, you can look forward. You can look more forward if you get the damn neck cover down there. You can look forward, some tilt, some tilt. There is a butterfly type joint. This section from here all the way to back here, that's all on a joint that moves forward and back. When you bring it all the way forward, it almost touches the arc reactor. And then all the way back, it hits the spine. The shoulder pad is on a dumbbell joint, a long stick. There's a ball joint going into this floating shoulder piece and then a ball joint coming out to the shoulder pad up top. And with that, you can get the pads up and away and around out of the way of the shoulders. And then the shoulder is a Rebel Tech joint going into the floating butterfly joint down to a ball joint going into the bicep. So with that, you can raise it up come up and around. You can rotate around until you hit the shoulder pad and then there's rotation on the bicep joint. Single Rebel Tech at the elbow, but comes up past 90. Another Rebel Tech at the wrist, it hinges, it swivels, and because of that, you can bring it around. You can get it to hinge any way you want to. Ball at the mid torso, ball at the waist, both together, you get crunchy. Back, excellent tilt both ways. And you see me going crazy with it and I haven't had any scratches yet, so not bad on the finish. Floating cod piece that get out of the way to, of the hips, which seem to be a hip joint coming out, and then there is a swivel that's set at an angle under that. So you get rotation at the hip. In fact, it comes way in, and then you have this to get it even further. With that though, the legs come forward, back. The hip joint itself goes out to about right there, but if you rotate this, it looks like the leg goes straight out. Talked about the single knee, it comes up to about right there. So close to his ass. Another type of ball joint at the boot, and with that you can get back, you can get forward, you can get some tilt, you can get some tilt, little bit of rotation. A floating rubber ankle piece that kind of gets out of the way of the foot, it goes back, goes forward right there, rocker on the ankle, and then a toe joint that goes about right there. And oh man, we're gonna get into some accessories. Iron Man comes with two fists, also comes with another set of fists, but I can't really tell the difference here other than the other set is smaller for some reason. I may be missing something here. Comes with two flat hands, and then comes with two splayed out hands. And then on mine, switching out the hands, the, well, okay, <laughs> the right was coming off with the joint in the hand, while the left just pops right out. And that's good when the joints stay in because it holds this bracer piece on here. But to get that bracer piece off, you have to remove the joint. Oh, and I don't want to pull it off with this because it's rubbery and it looks like it's whooshed. And that's where this little included tool comes into play. You put that around the bottom of the ball joint and that pops out. With those off, you can switch these other bracers on that have the blast shot on them. A little tricky to line up, but once you do, oh man, that looks 
amazing right there. You get eight of these smaller flaps. It has some nice detail on the inside right there, and then two Reveltech joints on each side. Most of the time, you're not going to use these, so you're going to end up with extra Reveltech joints again. And like Carnage, Iron Man has holes all over the body that you can plug in any of this stuff wherever you want to. You can plug them in, kind of hide them if you want to. They open up. You can put that there like that. They swing out. Rebel Tech joint. You can do whatever the hell you want with it. And they come with so many extras, thankfully, because the more you try to push in, the holes on the body are a little bit tight. The more you push in, the more you kind of angle it, the more they try to split apart right there. So it's a good thing there's a bunch of these extra. Then there's four of the bigger flaps. Bigger, more detail on the inside. They're just, they're just flappier. I understand wanting tight tolerances, but man, some of these are tight as hell. It also makes it a little bit tougher because this butterfly joint part is a little bit rubbery. So as you push in, <laughs> the hole tries to fight you. It's actually closing up as you push. Extra flight wings. If you want to leave them on there, you can even fold them down and have them kind of part of the armor, hidden away. I, I, damn, there's so many options here. And then there's two of these wing parts, or at least that's how they show them on the promotional pictures. That looks pretty cool, stays like that, but if you wanted to, I guess you could make it a nano sword, plug it down here as a weapon of some kind. Shh. Comes with six just blasts by themselves. The pegs on them are at an angle, so you don't have to get so crazy with the flat palm. You get it enough and the blast goes forward that's cool same thing if you want to use them at the boot with the kind of limited range at the ankle right there you don't have to get so angled down to get the blast going straight or if it's more of a back blast you can turn it it goes out the back and then finally there are six of these bad boys right here rebel tech joint on the end some blast goes to clear and then back to blast right here right behind the tiny little rocket and like i've said six times now during this review you can just plug those in anywhere you want. Have them blasting forward, blasting out the back, blasting to the side, blasting wherever the hell you want to, up underneath. But to make things even crazier, there are also four of these, which is essentially uh, one of those things you plug into the outlet to make it more outlets. It's just one of those days I can't remember technical terms. You know, the pluggy anythingies. But you take one of your mini extra Rebel Tech joints that come with this figure, plug it into the back right here, plug that into any one of the multiple holes all over this body, plug your other stuff into that, try not to push them in by the blast itself because those are sharp, and you get something like this, which is amazingly cool. I didn't even realize that, are these all different? No, they all three seem to be different. Oh man, you can arm this Iron Man to the damn teeth. And the cool thing about that, you can just pull that off, have that all together, still plug it in wherever you want. The trials and tribulations of the Rebel Tech joint. I'm trying to get it in there. And this tool has been handier than I thought it would, whoops, except when you flip <laughs> the thing out and it's gone. Good thing there's extras. And even after moving all the articulation around, all the stuff I've plugged in and pushed and pulled and everything, for those of you who are I don't really like Rebel Tech because they're so hard to manipulate, especially back to a vanilla pose, this took me all of like 10 seconds. This figure, like I said, goes back to more traditional ways of doing an action figure just for the sake of, I don't know why, but it's cool they did it on this one. For comparison, here's Iron Man with the amazing Yamaguchi Captain America and Magneto with a custom cape, of course, because I hate Rebel Tech capes. You can see he's not as beefy and broad as the other two figures, but he is a little bit taller. Here he is with one of the SH Figure Arts Iron Mans. I can't remember all the mark numbers. And then the Mezco 112th Collective, more classic styled Iron Man. A little bit too big for Bandai, a little bit too small for Mezco. Who are you calling small? But then here it is next to the Marvel Legends, well, Bleeding Edge Iron Man. And I can't remember which one this is, but it's another Marvel Legends figure. Here, if you really wanted to, I feel like you could fudge the amazing Yamaguchi into your Marvel Legends display. You hear it raining? <laughs> That's what I need, more water. But you get them here next to Marvel Legends comic book Captain America. I'm, I'm not sure which one that is, though. <laughs> and then the Marvel Legends Bucky Cap. In this instance, he looks a little bit large, though. But you go more with the old school Marvel Legends scale where they're a little bit bigger. Uh, this, I, I could totally go with this. And in case you were wondering, yep, you can do superhero landing. At the end of the day... <laughs> Just look at this crazy thing. How can you not like that? Sure, it brings along the frustration of the usual <laughs> Revel Tech figure, but it's almost like this time Kyoto went, hey, let's make it a little bit more user-friendly for the general collecting population. Although I will admit, man, that neck collar piece, I, I 
don't like it. I see what they were going for and it, it's useful. And once it pops out, you are just fighting that thing the whole time. I'm not gonna glue it down or anything because it's useful, like I said. But man, if I had one gripe about this, it would be that. Otherwise, I'm always talking about options for your action figures and this thing is loaded down. You can do so much stuff with this. And that's just options. That's on top of the articulation. So any pose you wanna put Iron Man in, this figure is gonna do that. Any action sequence, any kind of blasts, any kind of missile launches, anything you wanna do, this Iron Man is the Iron Man for you. What I'm trying to say here is if you do not collect Rebel Tech, if you do not collect Kyoto, if you're not into the amazing Yamaguchi line, this figure may change your mind, or it may not even get you into the line as a whole, or a fan of Rebel Tech because of how far this strays away from their usual formula. Basically, this is a kick-ass Iron Man that you can plug a bunch of stuff into. And I could have probably cut this review down to just that. Kick-ass Iron Man, bunch of stuff you can plug into him. So if you like this review, comment, like, subscribe, I'll catch you on the foosh.